Thanks for asking me back. As you know, um, Mabel uh, works hard to kind of put the services together and make sure that visiting speakers turn up at the right time on the right days, that kind of thing. Um, and she got in touch with me oh, months ago to say, could I book in today? And I said, yes. And then she came back a bit later and said, have you, have you got a theme? Have you got a topic yet? And I said, not yet. Um, and I kept her waiting for a couple of weeks, to be honest. Um, and it was getting a bit short. Um, and uh, I was praying that God would give me a passage. And then he gave me this passage, Matthew 5, 1 to 12. And then this morning I said to him, um, quietly, uh, just confirm I've got the right passage. Because the subject is about the, the blessings of God. Um, and he didn't answer me other than give me a, a verse from the book of Acts, which said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So I took that as a confirmation. So we're talking about the blessings of God. I'll read um, the passage through. It's not a long passage, just uh, 12 verses. Um, I've, I've got a Bible that gives you the NIV one side of the page and the message version of the Bible on the other side of the page. So I'm going to be reading and using the message version, um, but um, you'll, if you've got the NIV or whatever version of the Bible you've got, you'll see that we're covering the same ground. Okay. When he saw, this is chapter 5, verse 1, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, sat down, his disciples came to him, he began to teach them. Sorry, I'm reading the NIV. Um, ha, saying, I'm now going to message, you are blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You are blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one who is most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God, his food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The per persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time you put down or throw you, if people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens, give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Amen, Lord. Bless this word. As we have already prayed, I pray again, bless this word to us all today. Amen. It's basically just um, 
nine words that Jesus has spoken. They called the Beatitudes in some versions of the Bible, which I think is short for beautiful attitudes. Um, I've always thought that as a Christian. Um, but again, I'm just continuing with the message version. We read just before, right at the end of chapter 4, that Jesus was healing so many people. More and more people came. The momentum was gathering. They came from Galilee. They came from the ten towns across the lake. Some came up from Jerusalem and Judea. Others came across the River Jordan. And it was when he saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. So he'd, he'd healed countless people. And it says some were mental illnesses, some were emotional problems, some were physical seizures, some were paralysed. He healed them all. And the large crowds kept coming. But he wants to speak to his disciples. So he gets away. He deliberately climbs up the hillside. And those who were committed, the ones who are already Christians, in other words, climbed with him. So I'm not saying this word today is not relevant to anybody who's not yet a Christian and still on their journey. Great that you're here. But it's particularly aimed at those who would say, yeah, I am a Christian and I'm committed to trying to do, to replicate the ministry of Jesus himself, just healing and praying and blessing, etc., etc. And so he starts the nine words. This is the first word, first two. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one who is most dear to you. In other words, you're... In fact, I'm going to read that verse again. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. It could be a person. Who is most dear to you? Because only then you can be embraced by the one who is most dear to you. In other words, you know what it is to be mourning the loss. And I think someone recently has died in the congregation here and that creates a, a valid mourning and sadness. But Jesus is saying, do you know, when that happens, believe it or not, what follows is you then qualify to be embraced by the one who is most dear to you. In other words, himself. That's a blessing, albeit for painful reasons. The verse before that says, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. Being at the end of your rope means, in English, you kind of run out of energy. You've, you're half full. You're not living on a full tank. The tank is below half full. You're tired. You, you, you can't meet the demands that are being made upon you. You're just depleted, basically. You were mourning before. You're depleted this time. You're at the end of your rope. 
but with less of you, here comes the good news, there's more of God and his rule. Or, in other words, more of God and his kingdom. Wow. I don't like being at the end of my rope, but I can see now it's actually a place where God will meet you and he gives me and you his word that if we do get to the end of our rope, there's more of God and rule, his kingdom, coming your way. Isn't that an encouragement? Because when you're feeling washed out and wiped out, you are just feeling depleted. Or when you've lost somebody most dear to you, well, that's sad. We've all lost people that we've loved. But he's the one who will come alongside and embrace us. You will be embraced by the one who is most dear to you, Jesus himself. And to be honest, as much as I love my family, as much as I love the grandchildren, as much as I love the great-grandchildren, as much as I love my wife, my brothers, sisters-in-law, etc. There's about 20 of us all together. No one can be as loved as love for Jesus. He insists on just being at the very centre of our lives. He's the only one, actually. Not who was willing, but has already died on our, in our place so that we might live freely and joyfully and in relationship with him, King of kings, Lord of lords. And then he goes on, this is the third thing. You're blessed when you are content with who you are. No more, no less. I found that harder to kind of obey than I might have wished for. Because sometimes you wish you were like somebody else who can preach longer than me or better than me or whatever else. You feel inferior sometimes. And one of, the, one of the great freedoms that I, I taste and want to taste more of it is literally just to be happy with who I am. That's it. No more, no less. And Jesus says, you are blessed. And remember what the word blessed means? The word means, what would you say blessed means? If you are blessed, you are sad. If you're blessed, you are happy. That's what the word means literally. You're happy. And just finding out who you are and being content no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourself the proud owners of everything that can't be bought. In other words, you are who you are because you have been gifted to be that way. It's a gift. And it's the gift that makes you unique in this world. We all know that. Everyone is unique. He has made you and he has made me unique. So we don't want to be proud of ourselves, but just be proud of God. We've got everything that can't be bought. It was gifted to us in the womb. 
He just made us unique. Hallelujah. There's a great freedom there. That makes me happy. Fourthly, you're blessed, you're happy when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He is food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat in. So being hungry for God is a positive thing. Sometimes being hungry is a negative thing. It means your wife or your friend or whoever you live with or whoever you're buying your shopping from is not giving you enough food. That's why you're hungry. Because you only get half a plate instead of a full plate. I have no complaints at home, by the way. He is food and drink, the best meal you'll ever eat. You will be filled. That's what he's saying. And then Jesus goes on to say, sixthly, I think this is, no, fifthly, you're blessed when you care. Care for others. Care for situations that need to be changed. You're a caring person. At the moment of being full of care, careful, you find yourself cared for. Well, that's great, isn't it? If I'm willing to care for others, I, I discover that God's covering my back. <laughs> Even my car is covering that. I'm praying, don't go off for another 30 minutes. Please, Lord, keep it quiet. Seriously, if you're a caring person, you'll be a happy person. Because whether you've realised it or not, what happens next when you're caring is that you are being cared for by the one who has put you together in the first place in the womb. Wow. So many reasons to be happy. You're blessed when you get your inside world, by that it says, your mind and your heart. Your mind does the thinking and the heart does the feeling and the, the loving, etc., etc. When, when your mind and heart are right, put right by God, you can see God in the outside world. It's amazing, isn't it? As we begin to kind of think properly and feel properly and respond as he wants us to, we see God in the outside world in a way that we've never seen him before, doing the miraculous things he does every second of the day across the planet. It's just amazing. And you can see that at work. Makes you happy. Thank you, God, for showing us these things. You're blessed, number seven, when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete. Do you know what? There's a lot of competition in life, isn't there? Who drives the biggest car? Who drives the best car? Who lives in a posh house? Who lives in a rented house? People can be very competitive. There is healthy competition, but he's talking about being blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of fighting or competing. And that's when you discover who you really are.
God shows you your place in his family. And if he shows you your place in God's family, he's showing you your purpose in the family. Whatever your gifts are, you have been gifted. (laughs) Then he says, and this is, doesn't sound quite right when you first hear it, but what Jesus goes on to say is, you're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. I don't, I don't really want to be persecuted. I'm not persecuted. I don't know whether anybody here has experienced persecution because you're committed to God. <laughs> Can we be persecuted for other reasons, but he's talking about it's because you're a Christian that you get roughed up at times. Either by people at work or people in the street where you live, whatever it might be. But he said, even if your commitment to me is provoking persecution, be happy, be glad, because it drives you deeper into his kingly rule and reign. You turn to him, you ask him for help. And that's exactly what he loves to do. And then he says, this is the ninth thing, this is the ninth word. Not only that, count yourselves blessed, happy. Count yourself happy every time people put you down or throw you out. Who would like to be thrown out publicly this morning? It doesn't make you happy. I mean, it's almost silly saying that, but that's what the word of God is saying here. Because he says, if you're being persecuted, you're being put down, you're being thrown out, or they're speaking lies about you to try and discredit God. What that means is the truth of Jesus is too close for comfort and those people who are badly treating you wrongly are uncomfortable. And then Jesus says, you can be glad when that happens. You can, if you understand what's happening. Give it a cheer, even, it says. Wow, it's made me think differently since I started preparing. Because though, though you don't like it and they don't like it, I do. In other words, God loves it. He loves it when your stand is making such a a difference that you're getting roughed up by people who don't want to hear what you're saying or see what you're doing or lying about you. All heaven applauds. Isn't that good news? It's a pity we don't hear it, but they're clapping in heaven, you know. All the loved ones who've gone before who love Jesus are in heaven. There's applause in heaven. The Lord is clapping. The Holy Spirit, God is rejoicing. Because although the people don't like it, I like it, he says. I like it. All heaven applauds. And you need to know, for your encouragement, you're in good company. Because my prophets, my witnesses, my followers, my disciples, have always got into this kind of trouble. Where you're so strongly in favour of God and God's ways, 
and you're willing to obey him, whatever he says, go here, go there, move house, move to Reading, go abroad, be a missionary. Whatever he's asking you to do, whatever he's asking you to do, that, that's when you're blessed. That's when you're blessed. And if you're getting into trouble because of being so strong in your Christian faith and refusing to shut up when people tell you to shut up because they don't want to hear that kind of thing, especially if they're walking through the bus somewhere in Reading Town Centre or whatever else. I'd love to hear you doing it. Heaven applauds. You're in good company because all my prophets and witnesses over the years have got into the same kind of trouble. That's the end of this message. I'd like to pray for us all again, if I may. I don't know whether you found this helpful or, like me, challenging. Just got to think this through more, Lord, before I take this to Caversham. Can I share this word with you, Lord? It does seem, on the face of it, not easy to understand. He keeps saying, you're blessed, 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 nine times. No, well, but it's... It doesn't always feel that I'm being blessed. <laughs> you may not think, well, I, I, I'm not sure I even understand the sermon. Well, go back to Matthew 5, verse 1 to verse 12. Read it for yourself. Pray about it. See what he says to you. My confidence is you will come to the same interpretation as me. Because I'm just reading the word and explaining why Jesus says that. And you become happier as you go on in your Christian life. Day by day, week by week. It's, it's a wonderful invitation but not an easy one just to say, yeah, I can do that. So I'd just like to pray for us now and say, Lord, you said these words to your disciples. They'd seen you at work. They knew you were doing supernatural healings that no one had ever seen before in person. And they were following you and seeing you doing miracles after miracles after miracles. And then you climb up the hill and, and, and just gather the Christians around you, your followers, the disciples, as they say. And you have this, you want to share this with them. This is not for the unbelievers. They've got no motive whatsoever. <laughs> if they won't, even honour you, they're certainly not going to obey you. But you've got your disciples together. And you said, you can be happy, 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 happy. Some of the things that are happening to you may not be happy. But if you honour me in those situations... If you do the right things the right way, you will be blessed. You're even blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. And that's why so many of your disciples and prophets of old have faced persecution in their lives. And some are martyred. 
But Lord, where else can we go? What other life satisfies than living life in partnership with you, Jesus, being filled by your Holy Spirit, being empowered by heaven, No contest. So Lord, as we get in our cars in a few moments and drive home, will you be reminding us the reference is Matthew chapter 5, 1 to 12. Whatever version you read, it doesn't really matter. It says the same thing in different versions. And put it in our hearts. To say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll remember these words and I'll act upon them for your glory. Amen. Amen.